Okay, so this presentation would be about the estimators of the lost ark. You can see the Indiana Jones reference, and it's the story of the advanced reconnaissance group. Uh, my name is Michal Konečný. I'm the mage from resmonitoring.org. That is my official role. No joking, uh, my official role is senior software engineer at the head. And uh, who are you again? Well, I've never met this man before in my life. <laughs> <laughs> no, my name is Ethan Maloney, and I'm the product owner for the Community Platform Engineering Team, which I work with Michal and other mages, uh, other sorcerers in, the, in, that, in that team as well. Um, and yeah, we're going to take you through how we came about creating this team within a team. With the founding member sitting right here, so I need to be very <laughs> accurate. <laughs> uh, so today's presentation, like I said, is going to take you through the origins of the ARC team, um, where it came from, where the concept came from, where the acronym, acronym comes from, because that's quite fun, um, <laughs> what the purpose of the team is for, uh, what we use the team for within the wider CP team. Um, it has its own heroes and villains, as every, every good story does. And then we have live, in-action tales from the quests that this team embarks on. And um, Michal will tell you through all the battle stories, and then we will unveil our, our chest of treasure that we always find at the end. But uh, first, I'm going to take you through the origins of the ARC team. <laughs> so, uh, at the beginning, there was only a very small spark. This spark grew into a fire, and the fire started. And people were terrified of this fire. They really didn't like it at all. Um, but in the, you know, they started warming up to it and realized it mightn't be that scary, and it could be a little bit helpful. And the fire is absolutely a euphemism for agile. <laughs> so our team started um, in this agile transformation journey, and we wanted to start like planning some project work and delivery timelines and you know, we needed, we needed requirements and we needed deliverables and we needed success criteria and we were going to get all of this stuff and then I was going to come into the team and there was going to be somebody to take this stuff, enter me, and um, we were going to pass it to the delivery team, enter Michal and others, and we were going to have what people wanted at the end of it and it was just like that was going to happen. Like, I mean, how, what, what else is needed? And I tell you what I want and then I say, great, I'll give you what you want and then, yeah. You don't get what you want. <laughs> so this was our idea that we were striving for, like the Holy Grail, and we were going to get there. Why wouldn't we get there? It was really, really straightforward, simple, or so we thought. So the problem that we had was while we were getting these requirements and these asks from requesters, and um, you know they, they were there, but they, we had our success criteria. We knew what people wanted. We just hadn't a notion how to actually deliver it to them. We had lots of, or rather, we knew several ways to deliver the thing, <laughs> and we couldn't really decide what is the best way forward. And um, you may be familiar with when you're tasked with something, there is a, some indecision as to what technology is best to use. And in the in the project like Fedora, that is just it's, it's so complex and wide and cool, but like there's a lot going on. Um, you know, if you don't choose the right tech stack at the start, it's very tricky to know how many other people's projects you're impacting if it tends to be something that's not compatible or there's dependency issues, or whether you're going to choose something that will lock you in in three, six, nine months down the line when you have to develop something else. So our team was wasting an awful lot of time figuring out what the best path forward to be, even begin the development was. And that was causing, you know, it's causing a lot of upset would be a nice way to put it within the team they were frustrated with me because i wasn't giving them clear enough requirements i was getting frustrated with them because i wasn't sure what they were asking me for to begin with i told them that's what they wanted they wanted a red button what do you mean there's different shapes of buttons give me one so like <laughs> yeah yeah pretty much so there was there was a lot going on and yeah like and nobody knew what was the goal we were making it up as we went and we were delivering things but it, but oh my god it was not a comfortable process and this was happening for a couple of projects, happening for a couple of months, etc. So in the end, we said, right, enough, enough. We have too much going on. We need, we need to cut a break here. And I was fortunate enough to like have Kingo as a, as a friend and confidant, and also a team member who's saying, what the f is going on with the project? Ethan? they haven't started yet. I'm like I don't know what to do. So we 
were discussing the problems and he did come up with the idea of like, is it the technical pre-scoping is the problem? I was like, yes, I don't have anyone to like vet this with. You know, I can, I can vet it against like business requirements and benefits to people, but I have nobody to actually vet that this is not going to cause a dependency in the library over here that's upholding all of release engineering. I don't know. You know, I didn't have that context. So we decided, we were chatting and we said, why not I propose a solution? The solution being we pre-scope the work technically. So we still get the requirements from the, the requester. We still get the success criteria. We still get all that stuff. But before we even say yes or no, we pass it to a subset of our team and they investigate whether this will actually even work. And if it doesn't work, good luck. But if it does work, then they're going to look into like how we do it. The that this it has trade-offs, like you know, you're gonna grab the, the golden idol and you're gonna have to put something in its place. This, the trade-off was that I would need people from my team to spend time doing that, and that means taking them out of existing project work. So the, the barter was we drop projects we have been taking on, like I think there was four projects running plus our sustaining team as well, so we had five subsets of our team running, which is full capacity, nobody was left over. If you took a holiday, things stopped. I'd like to tell you it's completely different now, but like it can be a little bit like that still. <laughs> but we really had zero capacity for innovation or thinking things through. So the trade-off was drop the projects, drop everything bar one, and put more people into our infra and rel engine team. And they will be able to then take some time and pre-scope this work and work with me once it comes from the requester to us. And we'll work together and we'll vet it technically, give out some options, and then it's ready and then the development team can go with it. So... That was a solution. We sent out a comms to the managers, sent out comms to whoever needed to know. And they said, yeah, okay, cool, let's do it. So we did it. And here we are to talk about it, because it worked. <laughs> and we had a lot of fun then with the acronyms. So like, there was a good few that came up. Obviously, the advanced recon crew is the one that actually can be publicized. But like, <laughs> there's, there's a few there that was, um, that was a hot contender. The Angry Rabbits Committee nearly ran, nearly <laughs> won. Um, Smooge wanted Eve as raging children. Very, very. <laughs> 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 but, uh, no, we, we said, let's keep it professional, for God's sake. For once. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's just try and be like adults. So we've called it the Angry Recon, or the Advanced Recon. <laughs> 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 and we stuck Indiana Jones in front of it. <laughs> So anyway, so that's how the hat set started. That was our problem. That's what we were facing. That's the solution we came up with. And it, it really has been by far the best decision I think we've ever made in terms of project delivery within the CPE team. And I'm going to fight anyone who disagrees. <laughs> and Michael will take you now through the rest. Okay. Not through the rest, but through a few slides. <laughs> uh, okay. So first, every good story needs a heroes. They emerge from the battle unscared. They were heroes that everybody talked about. They were the ones whose enemies tremble when they hear them coming, but who they are really. And it comes to me that these are the heroes of the history. The arc is actually made from people from Infra and Lange team, and they are the heroes. You can see some of them here. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have these trade cards for everybody in the team yet. So, but we will uh, need to thank design team, federal design team, to uh, making those. So, few people here. We usually just uh, try to find the best suite for the investigation, for the investigation, and it depends on the on the thing we need to uh, to investigate. And every good story needs. Good villain. The people were scared when they saw them approaching. They were a nasty group and didn't bring anything good, but they were still imposing figures. And who are the villains? <laughs> oh, the ghosts. <laughs> okay, so one of them was uh, having the clear requirements. We usually get some requests with some requirements, but those are not technical or they are just something somebody wants. So one of the villain is the requirements. We need to actually get to him and defeat him. <laughs> the next time is next one is time. 
and time is always a villain uh, every time and in this case we didn't had uh, clear estimate we were struggling with the starting project and uh, when we thought it will be ready it was halfway through so we actually uh, trying to do this during the arc investigation to estimate time who how long this will take it's usually a good guess or a good estimate because uh, the people are trying to work on proof of concept trying to do the work that is we are trying to investigate so it's uh, it's good uh, usually good estimate and we are delivering on times which says a lot and the third one is technical options uh, this means that we can see in the arc investigation the options that we can think of and the team is actually trying to explore them just trying to look at them and see what uh, what is viable and we prepare for the quest so first we get the underpants all the underpants we can find then we do magic and then we have a profit we have a profitable business at the end and this is how we do it <laughs> no i'm joking but yeah we would run uh, all we would run all, all the underpants quickly if we do that so we decided to go other way uh, first we will choose the crusade this is the arc investigation we actually want to do and we will uh, we will actually explain why this is needed what is the story behind it why we need it uh, then we choose the right heroes as i said before uh, their heroes are cho chosen usually on the arc investigation if this is some old uh, project we have and we want to re rewrite it uh, we actually want to have somebody in the arc team who knows the project who actually ha at least have some knowledge about the project and the, if it if, if it's some specific technology we want to try uh, we want to ask people to be in the arc team who uh, have some knowledge about the technology so we have somebody who actually knows what he is doing in the arc investigation and then we go to the adventure and they left for a great adventure looking forward to see what they will found what new beauties they encounter what happy moments they experience but it will not always be a positive situation so we had a plenty of investigation I in this case open up the okay let's just open it up I'm not sure ah it's too, too this small. is why I'm wearing the glasses <laughs> <laughs> Let me just do it a little bigger. So these are actually the arc nodes. This is the output, what we do. This is the output of the adventure. These are the nodes, the journey of the heroes. And here you can see what we actually, uh, what initiative we have and what we actually did for the investigation. Uh, we have plenty of completed that are not implemented yet. We have plenty of uh, implemented as well, and as was said before, we don't always have uh, everything is not always great. So we actually encoded few of the things that uh, we needed some time, and it was great that this was actually found out in the arc investigation, not with uh, the project actually working on something. So. For example, what do people use FMN for? When we tried to rewrite the federal messaging notification system, we were looking at first what is there, then where there were plenty of custom rules for plenty of notifications, and we wanted to ask community first what they actually use and what could be useful, so we don't run in the same case like we have database for with plenty of custom rules that are used by one uh, person so we want to share them uh, we got some examples we still even now when the fmn new fmn is deployed we still have uh, 
some requests for uh, some uh, messages that were in there. Next thing is how could we scope badges properly. This was a big one because uh, the badges are here for a long time. We don't want to take the maintainership of badges, your team. We want to leave this on community, but the badges needs to be rewritten and we want to help with that. So in this case, it was how to scope the badges properly and how to actually uh, make it work. So what we can do, how we can uh, design it to be better. And the last thing is, uh, is for the uh, activity count script that is new and uh, there is still ongoing discussion what should be marked as contribution in Fedora because how you can recognize contributor by contribution but if they are not uh, clearly uh, defined it's hard. I can actually show some of the other other stories. For example, a good example, not everything that is bad. Uh, webhook to Fed message. When we did the investigation, we finished it. We had some design of how the webhook to Fed message should work. And then we looked at the GitHub to Fed message and found out that we actually designed it in the webhook. So that doesn't win. We just uh, the second investigation was just uh, writing out this should be implemented like this. Uh, next thing that uh, I can talk about. Michael, before you do, can I just point out as well as any project managers or product owners, whoever in the audience, if you don't have somebody looking into that and you pass a development team, get up to Fed Message and they do the work, and then you say, okay, next we're going to do webhook to Fed Message, and they go, it's the same thing. Like your credit, your credibility is shot. Like it's just, it's a waste of everyone's time. So like. Highlighting that as part of this ARF process was just huge because we were like, great, that saved a huge amount of time and it wouldn't be possible without somebody doing that free scoping work too from a technical perspective. Yeah. I would uh, say a second, uh, a second thing about this or second uh, example uh, at the end. Uh, common shift. The common shift is now implemented. It was stuck at the first time for a long time at uh, some law issues, uh, mainly on the GDPR stuff. And uh, this was something we couldn't do anything about. And it was actually something we did ARC investigation for, but we didn't look at the law, uh, law requirements. And uh, this was actually met when the federal legal team was actually started looking in it. So yeah, not all, everything could be catched by the ARC. And the last thing I would like to talk about is uh, that we have always more than one way. So the ARC team is usually looking, I can open one of the investigations so we can see it. Uh, yeah, it was a fun revelation to uh, work in software, with software engineers to be like, yeah. Yeah, but there's Here's loads of the, different ways to do it. You can see a li uh, list of the ideas that actually were looking at in the, uh, in the case of data number data grab. And all of those were looked at by the ARC and said, no, this is not uh, how it should work. Or, yeah, this is a good way to go forward. And there are conclusions and recommendations. So uh, the team who is actually starting on it has something to work on, work with. And I will give it back. Oh, you need to press the play button, I think, because I have it faded in. Press it again. See? There we go. Yeah, fortune and glory, kid. <laughs> that is what we were doing it for. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm we, were, we were looking forward to the reward that was waiting at the end, because we were going to be guaranteeing some technical clarity. Like, who doesn't want that? Um, we were going to have... A, guardrails for development teams to pick up a project and work within, not rules, but like rails that they wouldn't be worried about stepping over, but they would have the confidence and they would have the, the surety of doing some development within um, without going like way over or making ridiculous choices that they didn't understand the ramifications of that for. Um, so yeah, fortune and glory. 
<laughs> but there was there was there's a hell of a lot more to it than that. Um, the real fortune and glory that we have actually seen within the team is, and and hopefully as well, I would like to think in the Fedora project as well. Um, anything that the CPE team has put out in the last maybe two plus years since we've started using this ARC concept is better services. Um, we have upgraded the Fedora messaging notification system based on ARC, you know, which is going to see your Fedora messaging notifications be a lot less laggy. You might get them on the same day that you, you have that the thing happened, which is an improvement. Um, you know, we would have a, what else did we do? We've, we did some work updating Bodhi, we have data number, data grepper. There was, there's loads of services that we have updated based on these outputs from the ARC team as this is the best recommendation. So we've better services back into the community. All right. Um, our development team is getting more clarity on their work because it's, it can be painful to, to do some of this heavy development stuff. So it's, it's, it's nice to be nice. And if we can be nice to the development team by giving them a little bit more clarity and structure, then they'll be happier to do it. And you don't want to piss off developers. I'm sorry for swearing, but you don't want to piss off your engineers because the people deliver the projects. So treat the people nicely and the projects will be nice. Um, you're going to get less confusion from your development team. You're going to get a lot of less time wasted at that upfront trying to figure out what path is best because people have already looked at a couple of different paths. They've already been able to advise you on this is probably your best shot here. This is an agnostic enough service. It's not really going to do a lot of damage. We roll back, etc. So it's easier to just pick up and go. Um, as Michal mentioned, like we have had successful deliveries of all of the projects that we've picked up. Anything that we've actioned, we have delivered on. They've been successful. Um, we've also kept them to a very good timeline, which has made it easier to plan around as well. Uh, so for people sitting in that project planning, management, that kind of, that kind of sphere, uh, it's wonderful to be able to give a very good guesstimate of how long something is going to take, how long you're going to not have team capacity for, or how long you're going to need capacity for, for as well. Um, and you can plan it better and you can start building out like short-term, medium-term, long-term roadmaps, which will get a little bit fuzzier the longer you go, but you stand a hell of a lot of a better chance planning properly when you have that clarity already on the work in your backlog. Speaking of backlog, you get one properly with delivery plans. Um, whether in our case it is initiatives, their projects, uh, it may be like ethics in your backlog, but by having a team within a team, like an ARC team, doing those investigation spikes, pre-scoping the work. You're getting your backlog slowly scoped and it's getting delivery plans already built in so that by the time your team has capacity to start picking up that work, you have it ready to go and to choose from. At the very most, you're spending maybe, I think we've spent maybe a week, five days just reviewing the ARC documentation and onboarding into the project, but that is it. We've gone from like three, four weeks of oh crap, who should we be talking to about this service to just picking it up going, oh yeah, that still makes sense, and away they go. And uh, very importantly, we have an opportunity for community feedback in the projects before they even become live, which is extremely valuable, obviously, for the community platform engineering team. Um, I reference the FMN project most recently, and I'll credit Ryan Lurch for doing the, the, the bulk of this work. Um, before we started the ARC investigation, we were compiling the, the requirements, and you know the, the use cases were so vast and so many to try and cover. Um, Brian just mailed out to the community list and said, okay, what do you use the service for? And because people were coming back to him with their, their use cases, he was able to compile kind of like, well, this all fits in this general bucket, and that should be covered by this rule, so we don't need all of these custom rules that they've made to virtually get the same thing. These are a bit more use case, corner KC, we should probably check if they'll be covered by something else or whether we need to keep a custom rule. But it, then, it meant that like we weren't spending development time stripping out all of these rules from a service only to launch the service and have a load of people going, what the hell? I have, I have my thing configured to this and now I don't anymore. And we're like, shit, I don't know if that actually makes sense. It did because we had already pre-checked it. So that was extremely valuable to have. So yeah, it was great to, it was great to have that feedback loop. And as you saw in the documentation, it's open. You know, you can log on, you can see, you can read through all of the other ones. The ones that aren't implemented, please feel free to read them through and submit PRs or message us and say, like, you know, actually, there's a better way of doing that. 
We're open to that. That's why they're there. If they're not implemented, if they're, even if there's a draft, throw in your thoughts and ideas. They're, we want that. We want the feedback. And we are always in, uh, open to no new acronyms. Yeah. <laughs> like this, so yeah. You can open PR for that yeah. as well. Okay, and we have some numbers because I can read numbers. We have 17 finished ARC investigations. We have seven projects that were actually delivered with clear requirements and on time. And we have eight acronyms suggested for ARC. So far. And this could still <laughs> still grow, so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And yeah. uh, these are the, some links. Yeah. So we actually had some issue uh, uploading the uh, uploading the slides. So hopefully we will uh, solve this. And uh, here are some links. So initiative report. This is where we have the initiatives. Art investigations. This is uh, the uh, document I showed earlier. And ARCREPO is the sources for the documentation. And that is all. So thank you. We have a couple of minutes. You can and we have, have two or three minutes for questions. Yeah. Um, so you have a lot of people on your team, or from my perspective, you have a lot of people on your team. Uh, how can the same concept be applied to smaller teams where you might have only three people working on like three or four different projects mm -hmm. and you have to vet those projects so you're not wasting so, so much time on a small team. Do you want me to take that? Yeah. Um, my suggestion would be you need your you need buy-in from like your stakeholders and your management team to actually n not separate your team. Maybe there is a he, there is maybe one or two people of that three or four that can do that pre-scoping work. Mm -hmm. If you really are only a three-person team I would try and get buy-in from your, your management, your stakeholders to like, we used to call it a sprint zero, um, to set aside some time to like investigate that properly. Sure. You pro you, it depends on the size of the work. Um, some of our investigations have been finished in like a week and a half. Some of them can go on for maybe like five, six weeks. We don't try and keep them any later than that because otherwise it's a project and that's not the point. <laughs> but um, but you do you do need buy-in for that pre-scoping. And if you're a small team, it's probably going to fall to you and you need to be pushing the the wasted time that you're spending or build that into your, your actual delivery plan altogether. Yeah, because we have a lot of small teams and they're all hyper-focused on their specific task and there's not much overlap between them. Uh, okay. So maybe there needs to be more overlap. If, the if they're all delivering up, yeah, maybe yeah. you do need to like pull somebody from each of them and get them into a room and just get them to hack it out like yeah. for a week or two and then come back and say, okay, deliver this, deliver that one, deliver this, meet at the end, party. Yeah, <laughs> but wasn't that one of the first things that we actually did recently that we tried to de silo us? Yeah. Because yep. we were yeah. in a position that big team made of small team which were basically silos doing infrastructure, doing the engineering, doing this application, doing that application. And the first thing we did was basically trying to move all people together yeah. and, and try to find out the where to put the... The ARC team is never the same people all the time. So if you're... I, I, I misunderstood. I thought you meant you were just one team. But if you're many teams in a, a kind of a bigger team but just separate, you probably do need to look at like forming a standalone team like that. Like we were fortunate to be able to have our infrastructure and our lens team that they do su support sustaining work, but that's where we pull our ARC investigation team from. And they're never the same person. There's there's definitely like there's the requests that come in have all different skill sets, but you need the variety and you need different people talking about it this way. And just uh to make it clear, we have in in Fun Lunch team people from CentOS infrastructure, from Fedora infrastructure, and from Fedora release engineering. So we have people from yeah. all over the place, and developers. they work. Yeah. And developers. And developers, yeah. Test of writers, and the mix is good. Variety is <laughs> a spice of life. There was also a reason to leverage the in Fun Lunch team for this is the idea of the art team is something you you do, but you know, if there is a fire coming up in like, some of the infrastructure, yeah. that team can stop and go fight the fire. Yeah. And then You're not already committed to work afterwards. Yeah. 
yeah. don't have to fight any of the project that has uh, that is being worked upon. Yeah. Yeah. Do you set kind of guardrails for the art team? Because you mentioned you do proof of concepts, and I, I find it very easy for your proof of concept to sort of just become the concept. So do you kind of have <laughs> rules about where you stop as the art team? They, um. they stop short of implementation. <laughs> no, they're usually you will. Usually we have few. Uh, only a uh, few weeks, so okay. it, it will take so four weeks. We are in some dead know, end yeah, and yeah. we shouldn't go yeah. this way, so... Yeah. But there, there is never only one option explored. So there, there is a rule that we don't just look at one way. Okay. We, we do, in the, the team does investigate at least two, if not three ways. Right. Some will be automatically ruled out, but they will still be looked at. Like I think we were looking at... Um, replacing the off-lib library, Tomash was looking at it, and there was one that was absolutely not going to work, but we were still going to look into it to be sure, to be sure, um, and another option was, but they were both looked at, both put forward, right. and then, you know, so you the recommend. the time-bounding and the requirement to look at multiple things yeah. means you don't just get, like, tunnel vision on yeah, the yeah, yeah. concept, now let's yeah. keep Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Matthew? So when something does take, uh, like, upper bound, say, five weeks or something like that, yeah. does that mean it's three people full-time for five weeks on no. that, or because there are other things that they are pulled into? And things that have taken like the around the five-week mark has been things like the FMM project, where there was time needed to get people to come back to us with answers on like what their use cases are. The badges uh, project is also a, a falls into that as well, that people need time to, like, to think about what they use these things for and why it's important to, to come back with this. And we found that important enough to give that extra space because we didn't want to then start looking at our at our options with tunnel view or with only half the information. We try and get as much information up front before we start our so that we're we're looking at it as in the most holistic fashion possible. We and we are okay to keep it a little bit extra if needed. We also have a new way to doing it, and that is uh, if we are working on a ticket, on a regular ticket that we get just uh, in federal infra range, and it's taking too long, we actually just uh, uh, fill uh, fill in the ARC investigation and leave this to a team, dedicated team that will work on that. Yeah, so because anything that comes in that's too big, that's like, this should be a project, this needs more people, I don't know where we're going to take this, goes into that side of the world. And then we pick it up and look into it and see, yeah, okay, that's big enough. We need to, we need this, to projectize it. Yeah. In this uh, case, in the ARC investigation, is actually done by somebody who tried to implement the ticket and yeah. didn't actually uh, finish it, yeah. but at least started. We're, we're over time. I think we have to leave. Any other questions before we say goodbye? Thanks, Pingu, for creating it. Teamwork, <laughs> <laughs> teamwork. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, so that's that's the ARC project. If you have any follow-up questions or anything, you can reach um, me or Mikhail. Our emails are all listed at the bottom. Or you can find me at the bar later, probably. So. <laughs> 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 anyway, thank you very much.